All right, in this episode, you are gonna learn how to read fast. And if you don't have, you know, the next 10 to 15 minutes to learn how to read fast, then, you know, good luck with your McDonald's job because uh, I do not know one successful person that doesn't read. 100% of them read. If you could go higher than 100%, that's how many people would be readers. Even Ty Lopez, knowledge in front of his Ferrari in the garage. Anyway, I digress. If you wanna read faster, you're in the right place. Uh, David, Kirk Patrick from readingforresults.com. David, let's start off. What's the best way I can start reading fast? Because I suck at reading. I need to start reading more. Help me out. Where do I start? First, the bar is so low with reading success. Most people read under two books a year. 42% of college students never touch a book after graduation. If you ever want to write a book and stand out, well, here's the problem. 91% of readers never get past the first chapter. So it really just all starts with you. Rich people read while poor people scroll, okay? So that's the big problem. And also Mark brought up something was that all wise people read. That's straight, that's actually paraphrased, very well paraphrased from uh, Alex Hormozzi's role model, uh, billionaire Charlie Munger, that he brings up all the wise guys he knows read voraciously. 100% of them, which actually I have a quick question on this um because there's definitely books that i'll read the first chapter and i'll put it down i'm like this isn't for me right now you know do you think that that's a good idea or should i just struggle through those books where it just doesn't feel like a right fit uh so it's this is the thing so let's look at what high performance expert stephen codler brings up so he started the flow research collective if you've ever heard of it so they help high performers people who are president celebrities just people that have a lot of money, not a lot of time, just perform well. One thing he brings up, it's that for anything, let's say you're trying to get better at marketing, you suck at marketing. The first five books of any industry that you read, it's going to be tough, okay? It's going to be tough. But once you get past that hurdle, now you're going to see compounding exponential results because not only are you getting the vocabulary, you already know the basic mental models, you can rip through the books and then just really get to what really matters, which is application and money making. And then the other part is that, well, Mark brings up is like, I read a book and then it just sucks. Here's the thing that everyone should be doing, which is PQRST, write that one down. Preview, question, read, summarize, test, which preview, I always tell my clients read, read three to five summaries before you even pick up the book. Go on Amazon, find the top five star reviews that are like paragraphs long. You know, you've seen those where like, how is this, how are people having the time to write like essays? of reviews on this book, but thank you, sir. But like, that's what you should do. So you never pick up a boring book again. Uh, my next six books are always high impact. Well, it's not just about a boring book, but you know, I'll sit down to read a book and then a chapter in, I'm like, this isn't what I need right now. I love reading to like solve an actual problem that I have. And you know, so I think sometimes it's better to say, I'm going to put this book down because I've got another, I've got a whole bookshelf of books I need to get through. I'm going to pick up another one. I'll come back to this at a later time, you know? So anyway, I want to talk about reading faster. I was, I was sitting with my wife last night. I'm reading Predictable Success right now, which I think is pretty interesting. It's about the life, basically how businesses grow and, and, and shrink. Um, and after we were done reading, she, you know, my, my wife had finished 10 pages. I had finished about 25. I, I read a lot more. So I'm, I just, as you read more, you read faster. And she, I brought up the point, we we're talking about skimming. And so listen, I don't read, when I'm reading nonfiction, I don't read every single word because sometimes the author just keeps going on and on and on about a point. Like you need to read, reading is good. You need to read more like, yo, I get, it. I need to read. I'm going to skip. I'm going to skim to the place that I need. Skimming, good, bad, underrated, overrated. Should I be skimming when I'm reading? I mean, look at Alex Hormozzi. What does he say about how he does his reading? A big part of what he does is uh, skim. He skims through books and then it goes to where the meat is. So let's say you really, really want to read a book front to cover because this author just really matters to you. That's fine. But first, I would skim through it and go to the parts that you can apply this week. So maybe chapter 11 of Think and Grow Rich, Sexual Transmutation, is super powerful to you and applies right now. Go to that. Get your quick wins. Now you're feeling a dopamine rush because now you spent $15 to save yourself from $500,000 worth of pain or something. Maybe that's what you calculated. Maybe now you upgrade, you started a new innovative campaign. Then sure, go to front to cover. But many of these smart, intelligent, successful individuals bring up some books you skim, some books you scam, 
scan, some books you read and read and read. To your point, we want to get to that practical advice. Like that's what I'm, what I'm typically looking for when I'm reading a book is give me something that is applicable and I can apply to my life right now. You know, the other, one of the things I do when I'm, when I'm skimming is I'll read like the first sentence and I'll read the last sentence of a paragraph. And generally I find with nonfiction, if you read the first sentence and the last sentence, it's going to give you a pretty good handle on what that paragraph was about. I can move on to the next one. And then if I, if I'm like, oh, okay, this paragraph seems meaty, then I'll, I'll kind of slow down and I'll read through that section a little bit more, a little bit more closely. And I find that it's able, I'm able to kind of like put a method to the madness of skimming that way. Yes. You put the mental model. Now here's the problem. Cause I'll talk to people. I'll say, Hey, you, I like, I read this book. It's like, Oh, well, I read the book summary, but those two are not the same. Those two are not the same. It's Cause it's like this, you Mark, go listen to a speaker, right? A good book is just a really good presentation, a really good story. It should be a mix of logos, ethos, and pathos. Okay. So he needs to tell you a story. He needs to tell you why his story matters, what he's done. And then the emotion and logic, that perfect combination then gets you, once you finish the book, you've got three very high level points that you've now been emotionally wired to accept. And then you could forget all this information on the bottom that got you up there. But Many of us need to get through that process versus just because the laws of success are very simple. They're there online for you to get, but it's logic doesn't convince people to change their lives. No, we were talking about that in the pro group today. Um, I think you said this, uh, people make decisions, you know, sell emotion, back it up with logic and facts, something like that. People buy emotionally and justify with logic. Yeah. No, I thought that was a really good point. Um, back to speed reading, because again, my promise is that when you listen to this, you're going to walk out of here with like a dozen ways to, to read faster. So should I um, be reading passively or should I be reading with a highlighter, with a pen? Should I be putting post-its? How, how should I be reading? How active should I be in my reading? Whatever helps you with this acronym I'll share with you, which is Marie, M-A-R-I-E, which is Motion, association, repetition, imagination, emotion. So if you're doing, you can over highlight and you can over take notes, okay? But yeah. you apply these five to, let's say you write a little message to yourself that's emotionally riveting. Like maybe after, at the end of each chapter, you write one action item. Now process it into your life. Or like, what if I don't do this? What if you wrote that down? Like, what if I, what are the consequences of this? So not just, copy pasting the whole book on your notes and then doing nothing. It's like, okay, how do I apply this? That's what it's now, like. It is kind of funny. Sometimes I'll see book people that they have more words highlighted than not highlighted. I laid them like, what do you do? What, what's the point of what you're actually trying to do? That's analysis paralysis. So how you do one thing is how you do everything. So those who try to get every little bit from a book, um, sometimes it's just an excuse to not execute because Turns out we already kind of know what we need to do. Yeah, well, that's a good point. You know, at a certain point, you, you need to stop. I don't want to say you need to stop reading, but you need to move from the education to the execution phase of whatever you're trying, whatever you're trying to. Like, you don't need to fix your website again for the 10th time. I'm sorry. That's not what's holding you back. You need to get on the damn phone and make some sales. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah exactly. uh, what do you, so when I was in, I remember in high school, we took a speed reading course, which I was not interested in at all because I was in high school. All I wanted to do was like hang out with girls and play basketball. But there was this, there were, I remember reading something where like you want to move your eyes from the top for like, from like the middle of the page at the top all the way down. I've tried to do that, but it, it hasn't really worked out for me. You know, what's, what are some other ways I can move through words more quickly and retain them? First, so that one's already very advanced. That's what Theodore Roosevelt would do. And that's what more advanced people do. That takes, so part of it, you might be thinking, hey, my eyes can't even reach that far. But know the fact that there's a whole industry called sports vision training, where they help people like LeBron James and Steph Curry expand their peripheral vision so they can get more information in just a glance, okay? Also know that uh, on your peripherals, you actually process information 20% faster than your direct vision. Why is that? Survival, okay? Huh. Also, most people think like, oh, this is just weakness. So one, one thing that you could do, I call the four corners exercise, which is while you read, uh, try to at least 
capture the four corners in your peripheral vision as you read. So most of us are like super hyper-focused. It's like, can you read and just be aware of these four corners? So kind of like almost back your head away from the book so you're not just like, your face isn't crammed in it so you can see all four corners of the page. Back your head away and then also, I mean, Andrew Huberman, a Stanford neuroscientist with an amazing podcast brings up, your posture will indicate to your body to stay awake or fall asleep. So if you want to be an active reader, I'll sit up. I don't lie down. I don't read before I, I don't like to read before I sleep because that's priming my mind to think that, oh, when you read, it's time to sleep. Okay, so that's a deadly mistake. Mm. Here's the book. I have it here. Posture upright. Try not to do this because if you're going to read a lot, I'm here. And then actually you're getting more words and it's training your eyes because this, it's not helping. All right, this is your phone distance, right? This is your phone distance. A uh, problem since we're always looking at a same fixed distance, it's actually killing your vision. It's not helping. Yeah. Okay. So for everyone that's listening here, um, you, when you we talk about posture, you're sitting up straight, shoulders back. Now your head is looking down on the table, or are you holding the book up in front of your face about what twelve inches? Choose what feels good. Really, just choose what feels good and efficient. Sometimes I'll put it down. Sometimes I'll put it up because. Listen to your body. That's the biggest thing. It's like your intuition, right? Because you're listening to me logically, but listen to your intuition, okay? So one thing that I do feel uh, that's important to talk about here is there are so many, so there's so many videos and free courses on speed reading tips that you could look up right now, but we live in the age of information, but we lack a lot of motivation to do the information, to execute on the information, or we need, let's say, stories. So I'll tell you a story right now. Uh, there's a story of a little girl who had her mom dying from cancer. What did she end up doing? She ended up reading 30 books in 30 days on cancer to save her mother's life. And guess what? The mother said, uh, because of what the daughter learned, she gives all the credit to her. Because problem as well, a lot of people die in these hospitals from misdiagnosis or just, that's how the hospital works, sadly. Yeah, a lot of, another story, another story that I'll share with you is that my, uh, I was out at dinner and uh, a friend's brother apparently saved himself from, what was it? Anyway, he saved himself because he was speed reading so much research and that same disease was something that my grandmother died from. And I was like, wow, was it really the lack of information on my family? It could have saved their life, but no one was just like ripping through research. I was listening to Elon Musk talk about this the other day and that the, you, we, the, the access to information is so great that you can be an expert at anything in the world. You can be an expert at anything. All you need is an internet connection. That's it. That's the only thing you need. It's, it's really remarkable. And, and when you look back at the history of the world, like for, for the majority of the world, for the majority of time, the world's been, you did not have access to books. And if you did have access to books, you probably couldn't read because most people couldn't read. And if you did have access to books, you might've had like a two or three or four, but now you have access to, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable how many books we have, we have access to, but you know, again, I, I really think that you're choosing the right books, like you said, uh, finding the, you know, finding quick summaries, find the ones that are good, that are applicable. You know, if you're a business owner, end of year, you're trying to spend money so you don't get taxed on it, expense it, buy a bunch of books. We did last year. That's probably what I'll do, uh, this year as well. All right, cool. So we're winding, we're getting close to the end here. We're getting close to crunch time. Give me a rapid fire, David. What are a few ways that I can start to read more quickly? Well, rapid fire, it's first, I I am going to hone in on the whole motivation thing. It's, do you want more money? What if I told you reading just seven business books this year would earn you 2.3 times more money than the guy just reading one? That's from Sales and Marketing Executives International. Are you a parent? Do you want your kids to read more? The best way to get your kids to read more is you read more. Pew Research Center's data shows that family households that read more earn more money. Okay, so I can get into these tips. And tip number one is actually from my chap from chapter one of my book. I actually have all chapters, 14 chapters of my book memorized. And it's this, which is you're damned if you do audiobooks and you're damned if you don't. So you're listening to me right now at 150 words per minute. Let's do two times speed, 300 words per minute. But according to Forbes magazine, 
College professors and executives read at 575 to 675. So right now I'm trying to break limiting beliefs for you because you probably think audio is the fastest way to get information. Okay. Well, the benefit, so, uh, here, by the way, just to break in yes. here and, 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 and argue just because, Leo, you know, what the hell else we, we were on podcast to argue. Exactly. It, that the benefit of listening is I can be doing something else. I can be doing the dishes. I can be running. I'm going on a jog. If I'm reading, I'm reading. I'm not doing anything else. You know what I mean? So it's nice to be able to kind of passively consume knowledge. Exactly. So then that brings up Stephen Kotler's uh, Flow Research Collective that talks about that multitasking is a myth and that it's actually not efficient. And deep work by Cal Newport brings up that people don't want to focus anymore. People can just sit and do one thing. Meditate. This is another thing I've seen. Those who meditate quite a bit, uh, when I teach them speed reading, they surpass everyone else because they've already strain their brain and the prefrontal cortex and things like that. Also, people who are more right-brained, I'll tell everyone here, get a book on creativity because it's going to help activate the right side of your brain. Once you learn speed reading, you would actually become a much, much faster reader because I deal with engineers and logical people. They're the ones who struggle with uh, higher reading speeds the most, okay? Hmm. So that's one thing. Probably partially because they need to feel like they need to read and understand maybe every word, you know? That I'm not sure. But the focus, I, I, I definitely agree that there's value in being focused. If there's one thing that successful people do, it's get focused, laser focused. They understand where they want to go. They have the vision. They understand what they need to do. And then they focus on actually executing, right? Yeah. And then more learning styles. If we look at what the neuroscience shows, when you read on paper versus reading on a screen, reading on paper, people comprehend more, have deeper understandings and retain more of the information because this is analog. Our brain likes analog as well. So let's say the book Hundred Million Dollar Leads coming out by Alex Hormozzi. Do you really want to listen to an audio book of that? No, you don't. You want to print it out. You want to sit down and read that book. You want to take notes. You want to look at the graphs. You want to look at the diagrams. So for when it really matters, it's a physical book. Yeah, which by the way, Hundred Million Dollar Offers was one of my Sorry, favorite books. Hundred Dollar Leads is the new one. I know. I'm I'm signed up for his webinar, which I think is coming out in a few weeks, but uh, which is free. But the the under, I, I mean, Hundred Million Dollar Offers was so good. I I will buy any book he he sells as long as they're ninety nine cents, like Hundred Million Dollar Offers. I I I kid. I'm being hyperbolic. But what I loved about that book was it was a combination. It was there was a lot of like exercises. It's almost like a workbook. You know, it wasn't like this type of thing that you passively listen to. That was like okay, we're going to do some deep work and we're going to actually grow your, your offer. We're going to grow your business. So I, I really like that. Um, but listen, you got to give me something good for TikTok, David. You're giving me the motivational. You're giving me the mindset. Give me the TikTok. Give me the chat GPT top 10. Give me, sure, give sure. me stuff for the talks. Top so, tips right here. So all right, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to give you the question though. There's yes. question answer. All right, David. I'm having too much fun here. No, that's good. All right, David, before we go here, David, how can I read fast? Give me a few tips. First tip is you need to read with a pen. With a pen. You can use your finger, but pen is much better. And you're just going to go from left to right. And this is your pacer. It's going to keep you on track. Okay, so when you read faster, you're more focused. And have you ever read several pages just to realize you retain nothing? You reading faster, keep you focused like you're driving a car. When you're driving a car, you're focused and you're getting more information in less time that's stimulating your brain. You're more excited. Next tip is understand that what if I flashed like a whole sentence right here, multiple words at you in a split second, you probably processed all those words, right? So now I want you to apply that same thing, which is now you're going to look here, place your eyes here, here, and here, Okay. So that's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. Yep. So everyone, more everyone listening, he's, yeah, he's not like scrolling the page with his eyes. He's, you're bouncing about every yes, year. So each line, I'm going to place my eyes at least three to four times versus 12 different placements, which actually tires you out. Okay. So that I would capture all the information there and there, there. And then some people do whole lines. Some people do multiple sentences as well. Okay, so that's step two. Step three is reducing and minimizing sub vocalization, which is the voice in your head. Have you ever seen a stop sign uh, when you're driving? Did you have to say stop out loud, loud in your head? You didn't. So now applying that same processing speed with 80% of the English vocabulary, 
he'd most likely be able to read faster. Okay. And to get that in, uh, is really part of it is really just read more and get the reps in. Okay. So that's minimizing it. So what some tips you could use would be, uh, would be uh, chew some gum, maybe count one, two, every one, two, one, two, one, two, every time you move your eyes as well. And another one is uh, start to read with your pen in your left hand, because what controls your left hand? The right side of your brain. And the right side of the brain can actually process, as it multi-processes information. When you look at a painting, you don't look at every little part of the painting, you look at all of it. So what I'm trying to help you do is read as if you were, quote unquote, reading a painting, all right? The next thing is, why don't you try, this is a slower exercise, but why don't you try just like giving little movie snapshots every time you read multiple phrases, okay? And so that might slow you down, but we need to slow you down to speed you up. Have you ever learned new form? Have you ever new, learned new form in a new sport, right? It's, right. It, you're terrible, but you're going to grow farther because you listen to your coach. Especially your coach for grows. golfers. Like you, you, the, the, I, I hate trying to learn how to tweak my swing because I'm just slicing everything. Um, go back up, what, but what are you referring to exactly, you know, with slowing down snapshots? Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah. So let's say I slash, uh, your girlfriend's mad at you, right? You, how would you visualize that or process that or experience? So the right side of the brain isn't just visualization. It's how do you emotionally feel that as well? Instead of just logically understanding it or mo most people, when we read, we just think about the sound, right? We just hear the sound, but now right side or right sit side of the brain reader is like trying to process it emotionally, visually, and that will help boost your reading speed and comprehension because that's what true comprehension is. If you could visualize it, you most likely comprehended it. That kind of forces you to comprehend at a deeper level. Super good, super good. And I will say, listen, y'all, if you're saying to yourself that I'm not a reader, I'm having a hard time, the, the only way to become a reader is to open up the book and read the first page, right? So definitely just get started um, in, in, you know, we talked about mindset. I will say that if you have not read it yet, you have to read Atomic Habits by James Clear. Must read. Super good. Super good. Atomic Habits. Uh, David, where can we find you? I know you've got a webinar coming up here in the next few. You're doing all these free webinars. I don't know how you're giving it all away for free, but these free webinars, where's the best place to get signed up? Yeah, uh, readingforresults.com or follow me on Instagram at David Reads Fast. Yep, and it's reading number four results. Reading number four results.com. It's reading for results.com. That's the number. David, thanks for being on the After Hours Entrepreneur and helping me read books faster, bro. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Glad to be here. <laughs>